Hi, PJ. Thank you so much. We appreciate everybody who's joining us today and sharing your time with us to listen what we'd love to share with you. So really appreciate everybody who's here today and which sharing, which is basically our most valuable commodity, if we even want to call it such, our time. So thank you for connecting and spending this time with us. And we're ready to go very, very shortly. And for those people who have just recently joined, again, we will be taking uh, live questions as well as a Q&A after. Hey, Mike. Hello. <laughs> you look lovely Excellent. as ever. You have a glow. <laughs> Thank you. You're so kind. And I'm just so excited to be talking with both of you gentlemen who both in your in your area are so accomplished and such experts. And um, I also want to welcome everybody else for joining this webinar. Thank you for making time. And the three of us are so excited to delve into our topic. What's our secret health and longevity for a better tomorrow? And our mission today is to share with you our top insights and tools with regards to optimizing your health, extending your lifespan. And we're going to talk about some pretty exciting new technologies, including regenerative cell therapy. And uh, I mean, you'll likely know a little bit about us, but I think it's always great to say hello and introduce ourselves for those who might not know everything about the panelists they're about to listen to. Mike, you want to go first? I'll go first. Uh, I am a four-time Mr. Universe, a California powerlifting champion, a Hall of Fame martial artist. Um, so I've been active my whole entire life. I got to be the only person in history to do the original gladiators back, you guys too young for this, but back in the late 80s, early 90s, and then again um, in the 2010. So we got to do battles throughout my entire life. And I always talk about I'm a born gladiator and my body is my tool that I get to use, um, but it is also an art show. So I would like to keep it as healthy as long as I can, but active even longer. So <laughs> it is a, a, a big opportunity for me to be here today. And I am a fan of who we're gonna be talking to today. So this is exciting for me. Wonderful. And Dr. Gaurav Goswami, it's so great to be in your presence again. Uh, what would you like to share with the audience about yourself? Well, I practice in Newport Beach, California, and uh, I'm by training a surgeon, interventional radiologist, and the last 10 years been focusing on regenerative medicine. Excellent. And you're actually, which is one of the most wonderful traits about you, you are very, very humble, as everyone will see further in our discussion. I had the opportunity to pick your brain about stem cell treatments a few weeks ago, and my mind was just blown. Uh, just a quick little um, something about myself. Uh, I have been a passionate and health and wellness biohacker for the last 15 years of my life, optimizing mind, body, and spirit. And it's my mission to help everybody elevate their own lives as well. I think the more the individual is able to thrive and fulfill their potential, the more collectively as the human family, we're able to thrive as well. So... And what I really like, I think what really unites all of us, we don't see this as just a individual quest, longevity, you know, healing, it's something that really carries further out into the world, like our why is very connected and I love that about both of you. Um, perhaps for some of the audience who may not be as well acquainted about a topic that we're going to take a deep dive into, Dr. Goswami, can you give us a brief overview, what are stem cells and what do they do? Yeah, I mean, um, it's it's obviously quite a cliched word out there, stem cells. And at the heart of it, you know, our body is has stem cells right from the moment we were conceived. And that's how regeneration and repair happens. You know, every, every year, 90% of our cells are renewed in our body. Every six to seven years, physically, all the cells are renewed, different organs obviously renew at a different speed. Um, so this is the fundamental of our existence um, and, and stem cells are the drivers of that regeneration and repair process. So we, we have sort of that holy grail within us. We just haven't tapped it because whenever disease or injury happens, it's actually the damages at the cell level and if we could figure out to regrow the cells that are damaged, 
then we can treat a lot of the conditions we suffer from. So that is the fundamental basis of, of stem cell therapy. Yes, and you've actually spent, I think, the last decade, right, uh, uh, developing certain protocols and regenerative treatments that can help people avoid um, surgery. You work with minimally invasive treatments um, and are, you know, helping people also to take a preventative approach to health. This is something um, that actually also fascinates me about you, Mike. You have been super successful in your field for many, many decades. Uh, you've, you're probably one of the most photographed fitness models in the world. Um, you know, a four-time winner of uh, Natural Mystery Universe. Uh, how, what is your secret to doing all this, you know, without injuries? The secret is understanding that basics for me and the people I've worked with around the world is, is so fundamental. Um, but it's the whole thing. Like you talked about earlier, which I love that you're, you're, it's interesting that in society, health and fitness is something that's so, it seems to me nowadays, it's just that one side, just exercise where you were talking about something. And I believe this wholeheartedly, it needs to be the mind, the spirit, the body, all of it as one. And so my belief is, yes, I'm exercising. Yes, I'm working out the way I work out, but it's everything that I do about that. Um, the stress release, the making sure the nutrition is right, making sure and I'm not just feeding the muscle, and we'll talk about this, but it's that feeding the connective tissue and keeping us healthy for a longer period of time instead of being just the guy that goes in and weights, lifts, because muscle. It's more important than muscle. Muscle's great. Muscle, obviously, it looks great on the body. It's very nice. It, it's made a career for myself, but it's more than that. It's the connective and it's everything else that the body is made up of. And again, driven by the mind is if you can work on that stuff as well as the muscle. I think you, you get my career longevity and, and I've been in the magazine since 1987 and I'm still doing the covers of the magazines today. And it's because of the belief that it's, it's all as one. You can't have one without the other to be truly successful for a long period of time. Of course, you guys understand this. You can go in, be famous for a year, great, but an injury takes you out. And this is what is, I'm so in love with the doctor because he's shown me something and I'm in the health and fitness world. I'm into longevity, something I didn't know about. And so this has opened up a whole new door to me going, wait a minute, I can keep going. I can feel better. This is, this is tremendous. Tell us about your experience, Mike, because you and Dr. Goswami have actually, uh, you work together. You're a patient of Dr. Goswami. So tell us about your personal experience, how you actually found yourself in the spot that you need to do something and then what happened. I think uh, these personal anecdotes are always very, very helpful for an audience to connect with a subject that we're also then gonna do a deeper scientific dive on. I'm very excited to get Dr. Goswami's uh, uh, expertise on that. But so tell us about what happened, Mike. Yeah, I, so for everybody that's out there that's hearing this and they're going, hey, what well, you've been working with them. That's why you're pushing this. No, mm -hmm. no, we just teamed up just over a month ago now. And, and I said to everybody when I did this, I'm skeptical. I don't know. You know, I'm going in here because for me, it, it's food and, and nutrition and trying to stay as healthy as I can was my belief that there's not much else you can do. Well, now in my 50s, I realized there is something else I can do. And that's how we teamed up. And I was so I'm being so cautious about what I say on my videos and talking about it because of the fact that I am over here going, wow. Is it work this well? It's mind blowing to me. And I said to Mona, my, my, my wife, I said, two days, three days later, I was like, I'm being cautious on this because of the fact that I feel like my knees are 25 years old now. Now, again, I'm mid fifties and I'm still lifting like this. And I said, just a few days after it felt so good. And so I try to be cautious about it because I also went into this, not from an injury. And I know most people do this because of injuries. And I'm here today, today to say, like you guys do the same thing, preventative. 
I'm doing this before something gets so bad and out of control that I don't be active anymore. And so that's why I went in. And so maybe, maybe that's smart of me. Maybe that I'm jumping ahead of the game, but it's kept me in this game of health and life and living, let's say life, being active for a longer period of time than most. Mm. So uh, I'm still blown away that it feels this good. And I've already said, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do my back next because I understand that back for most individuals, and, and I'll let the doctor talk about this, that lower back problems for a majority of society is something that people live with without thinking there's a possibility of doing something. So I'm going back in. I'm, I'm sold. Exactly. And something you just said, Mike, you know, so many people are living with certain conditions with chronic pain, and they just think it's normal quote, you know, with aging, this is just what they have to contend with. Right. And um, so I think it's uh, two things are really crucial. Once one thing you said, you know, you've got to cover the basics. And most people who are listening to us today, I assume that nutrition, sleep and exercise, they already have covered, which is why today we're going to actually talk about some really cutting edge stuff that I think everybody would like to learn more about and having an expert like Dr. Goswami here for the stem cells, for example, which will be one of our topics. Um, the other thing is preventative. So many people, we're living at a time where it's quite possible that unless there's an accident or something else horrible, we may live to 120, some scientists even say 150 years old. So science fiction has actually become science fact. Now, a lot of people are still afraid that getting old means, oh, oh the last 20 years of my life are going to be miserable. Why do I want to extend that even further? Because that's what we have in our minds about old age. It's combined with suffering, with deteriorating body, but we are living in a time where we have such exciting new technologies and knowledge at our disposal. So Dr. Goswami, could you walk us through uh, what um, actually uh, Mike, what, what Mike experienced with you? Yeah, so just to put it into perspective, obviously, Mike um, is, is, I mean, the problem is that the mainstream treatment options for joint pain or any kind of um, problem, physical problem, have been limited to certain you know, options only. Most of them involve painkillers, steroids, injections, or surgery. And I think um, for me, as a professional, as a medical professional, because I'm an MD and I'm not trying to this is not a cream or this is not a new pill that came out. I mean, this is actually working with your own cells. And um, I feel tapping into our body's own ability to regenerate and repair. Um, you know, again, you know, I wouldn't necessarily claim that everybody sees the same amount of results or the same kind of benefits, but just having the assurance that nothing foreign is going into your body and nothing that is going to cause any harm, uh, you know, any potential harm um, is refreshing in medicine because each one of the surgeries and the treatments that I've done in my career, I always had to explain some of the you know, downsides and the side effects and what can go wrong. So, uh, you know, the, the thing with Mike was that, you know, there's, obviously the word preventive, but I don't want necessarily for people to think because everybody's at a different stage with where their condition is. But one of the questions that I like to ask my patients is, what is your maintenance plan? Mm -hmm. Because say you're into kickboxing, weightlifting, or you know, most of the patients who seek me out for these treatments are extreme athletes, you know, heli skiing, and, you know, MMA fighters, you know, obviously professional sports. But you need to, if you're going to do something you love doing or you're in an arena where your performance is important, then you have to have a maintenance plan. And, and a lot of patients, a lot of people, uh, the weekend warriors usually don't have an answer to that. Their plan generally is when the breakdown happens, that's when they're going to seek 
advice. But if you ask them what's the maintenance plan for their car, mm -hmm. then they will be able to give you a more concrete answer. You know? So, and, and I think to some extent, um, the medical community itself is also to blame because the treatment options that I mentioned are not really very exciting. So, um, you know, I'm speaking mostly from sports medicine and orthopedic world, which is where I practice. So, you know, stem cells obviously are going to have an application for a variety of other conditions. But just in, within the orthopedic and sports world, um, if whether it's your toe that's hurting or whether it's your knee or elbow, the treatment options over the last 30 years have stayed the same, you know, mm -hmm. in medications steroid injections and if that doesn't work then surgery um, those are not exciting options so sometimes even when you have some problem you actually tend to either ignore it or limit your activities or continue to do things despite having the pain because you know that the treatment options at least for the educated are not very great right so yeah, yeah. so all of this kind of led me to kind of think what, what can we really do to help people stay active? Uh, and, and that's how with Mike also, when I assessed his knee, obviously there has been wear and tear for the amount of work he's put in. Um, so it does not have to get to a point where it completely breaks down and then he starts looking for advice or you know treatments because at that stage it might be gone too far for the body to be able to repair it so so he's he's sort of um, really understood the science where things are and, and how this whole thing can help us you know. mm. uh, and in my bare, yeah no sorry just to complete and then bare minimum, you have to have, like you mentioned, figured out your diet and exercise in your body because this is a product of cells that is coming from your body. So if your body is not healthy, then it's unlikely that your cells are going to be in optimal condition either. Wow. Right. In Mike's case, he's been consistently for decades lifting extremely heavy weight. So I can't even begin to imagine the wear and tear, even if you are very careful and have a very healthy approach such as Mike has. Now, of course, Mike, in your case, we're talking about somebody who is a world famous athlete. However, this also applies to the general public. You know, all of us want to live long lives, mobile lives, um, and, you know, to just live as as best as possible, be our best selves. And you mentioned it before, instead of putting something foreign into the human body, Dr. Goswami, you're actually making your body your own pharmacy, right? So can you give us a brief overview about the methods of, quote, farming a person's cells? So many people don't understand the concept of how to get your own cells. So, you know, our body is made up of cells, you know, and our body is designed to regenerate and replace our cells. In fact, the very fact we have a condition called cancer exists because of our body's ability to regenerate and repair cells. And cancer is just when something goes a little bit wrong with the process of regeneration repair, too many cells are formed, so then they become a tumor. So we know that 24 seven, that is what is happening and in fact, that's how we heal from a lot of daily stuff that happens to us. We may not realize it. You know? uh, and sometimes uh, even when our knee sprain or ankle sprain, we give it rest for a few days. What is that rest doing? That, that's when the body is regenerating, repairing the damaged cells. It is only when the damage is long-term or repetition, um, you know, then, you get to a point where you're not starting to have symptoms on, on a consistent basis, or, uh, and that's when you seek medical advice. And, and so when we look at cells in our body that regenerate and repair, which is a process that's on 24 seven, when we isolate these cells and 
studied what was in there, we found they were loaded with a lot of growth factors. And they were loaded with a lot of uh, what you call the building blocks of cell repair. So in the, an ability to be able to naturally repair cells uh, and, and regrow the tissue that was damaged. Okay, so we're not talking about building scar tissue, which is what happens after surgery. Mm -hmm. or, or, you know, so here we are trying to replace the actual damaged cartilage, muscle, ligament that has by what it's supposed to be in its original form. So when that works and everything comes together, um, then you have optimal performance coming out of it because mm -hmm. that is the goal, right? Mm -hmm. The goal is not, I mean, one of the common jokes we used to have in our medical school was that it is very interesting when a surgeon comes out and says surgery was successful, all he's actually saying is that the patient came out alive. Mm -hmm. out of the operating room. Very few doctors are able to sit, very few surgeons are able to sit with their patient a year out and say, look how well he's doing. Yes. And, and so I, I think people get lost in the medical system. Um, unfortunately, in our country, the medical system is also uh, sort of not designed to promote excellence. It's mostly designed to you know, continue to do the things that insurance companies or the FDA, or you know, there are too, much, um, too many players <laughs> um, that may not necessarily be thinking about your health and how you can stay active. So, so all of those things come together in this yeah. treatment. And in, in your case, uh, what I like and what also came up in another conversation we had, Dr. Goswami, is uh, you actually, in a sense, like not, quote, not seeing patients again because they are healed. They're doing better. It's not just about surviving. It's about thriving. Um, Mike, I'd like to hear about your personal experience with this. So after you got the treatment, I think you put it to the test, right, recently of lifting weights again with your knees. What happened there? Well, first, I got to say, I, I, I don't know if you do this, but I do with Dr. Goswami is I take notes when I talk to him. It's amazing because he's got a plethora of knowledge, but he's um, he also thinks, which is which I knew the first minute I was talking to him, he thought like I do preventative lifelong. And, and so I got a couple notes too, real quick, if I could. Because yes, you mentioned something you said, people don't want to live longer, because you know, those last 20 years, they're not that great of body and stuff. It's interesting, because I'm in the health and fitness world. And I've been in gyms my entire life worldwide. And I would say 20 was very kind of you. I meet people in their 30s, that are banged up so bad by 30. And the average lifespan is 76 and a half. I'm like, wow, wait a minute, hold on again. I want you guys to know that you can be a savage, hopefully for a lifetime. And, mm. and so that's what's so great about today. And I got tingles still because I'm excited. I want to get down there. It's like a, a kid in a candy store. I want to get back down there and, and do my back and then do my elbow. I'm like, I'm in. Um, but you were saying one thing about percentages. How much better will the treatment be for somebody relative to another person? And I hope everybody listens to this because if you can do the nutrition and you can start treating your body better, like he talked about a car, just getting it serviced every once in a while, you're set up to win. And then doing the process adds in a more. And I'm one of these guys that believes in, if it is 1% better, I'm doing it. If getting to sleep and sleep in eight hours is 1% better, I'm doing it. I'm a percentage guy, just because at this level, it's 1% that separates me from number two. And so imagine someone that ex that extreme, what could it do for the average Joe, the weekend warrior? I'm thinking it would do even more because I put my body through the test. I wear and tear this thing out. I, I'm a gas pedal, 100 miles an hour. So for the guy that goes through life and just wants to do it on the weekends, I'm going to assume 
it's our it's even better for them relative to the guy that's crazy like me that can't stop so i'm just curious about that is that get your body right get it going good and then do something like this it i know there can't be a percentage and i know that you shouldn't put up percentages on what it will do for each individual but i just want them to understand that um well, I mean, uh, most of the time it it is we i try to indicate you know, every condition, every patient is an individual and depending upon their needs, their goals, um, where they are with their condition, you know, the cell therapy, I think the biggest misnomer or, or misunderstanding can be that, okay, I'm going to have one injection and it's going to take care of it for the rest of my life. That's like saying your car is going to have an oil change and then you can keep driving it. For, it doesn't work like that. The, the main important thing to understand is that until now, we've not had options which were enticing enough because they all came with the downside and side effects. So to have something that can help you, and I'm not saying necessarily, sometimes I do get called, my office would tell me that we have some of these pro athletes calling and saying, I have absolutely no problem. And I just want to enhance my performance. And, and it's not, I mean, as I'm not going to offer a medical treatment or a procedure just for performance enhancements because first of all, the resu results are not guaranteed and how it works. But when you know that you love doing something, because one of the problem is that most of the time we start slowing down when our joints hurt um, and we start cutting down. So I'll have people who, I yeah, love to play tennis four times a week, but now I'm only playing it on the weekends. And the question is why, mm -hmm. right? Because if that was a source of joy to you, then that's what you should continue doing. Um, also, we've set our benchmark low. And one of the things I wanted to clarify was we talk about life expectancy. Sometimes we use the words interchangeable. Life expectancy and lifespan are two different things. Mm -hmm. Human body was designed and there is documentation to be living beyond 100 years, up to 150 years. So that's lifespan. What the government puts out every year is life expectancy based on how the population is doing. Yes. So we have to constantly not lower our target to 78, 79 years or whatever. It's different for different countries. We have to keep our target at 150 and then do every thing in our life and, and also make sure that those years as Ariana clarified right in the beginning are full of leading a fairly active life. Yes. We, we shouldn't equate old age with giving up things that we love doing because obviously nobody would want to sign up for just being able to breathe. <laughs> you know, um, what good is a functioning heart and a mind, if your body gives, you can't do physically things. Physical movement is an essential part of human existence. There are studies now showing on how patients who have knee pain and cut down activities have higher incidence of depression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's in, in, in small ways, it starts affecting so many aspects of your life. Hopefully. And why would you want to put yourself in that situation is, is the real question one needs to ask oneself. We Absolutely. think so alike. Oh. Yes. And you said something you said, joy, you know, and joy. And of course, the reduction of mobility and pain and how that can lead into depression. And again, the I personally believe this and for you to say, to keep our eyes on that target, the 150 years, which I have had the privilege to talk to quite a few scientists whose life is dedicated to that. I mean, Dr. David Sinclair is, is one of them, the author of Lifespan, a fascinating uh, man. And what's happening in the labs right now, we are going to see in real life within the next five to 10 years. And we really need to start asking ourselves, not only how can we make our um, life quality, how can we make it better, augment that, and how do we extend our lifespan, but what do we actually wanna do with it then? Because this, we're gonna likely live longer than our 
parents could have ever imagined, and not just by five years or 10 years, but by such an amount that it's mind boggling. So the implications on societies, societal structure, economies, and even families. Imagine you are like a great grandmother, great grandfather, you're feeling well, you can be a real, you can help raise your great grandchildren. So a lot of things that we now take as a given that and which I find awful in a lot of our, especially Western societies that um, people of a chronologically older age are often discarded, put into the homes of the elderly versus being active, productive parts of our families, of our societies. All of this can change with such technologies. And that's what really excites me about it and bringing back joy to our lives. And that's where people such as you and also Mike, it's like trailblazers. It's, uh, you know, every new paradigm change has very few people at the beginning. And then it also becomes available to the larger public and can vastly change how humanity exists, works, collaborates. And that's where I think the work the two of you, uh, Mike and Ariana, and the message you guys are spreading, you know, I've been a big fan of all of your podcasts, Ariana. Uh, is very, very important because the medical part comes later. And, and I hope, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, may not be the best business statement, but as a doctor, I'd rather not see a patient because seeing a patient means they have a problem. Right? Why you should you have a problem? 80% of the diseases today are lifestyle related. That is what is filling up doctor's offices. That is where what is paying for your doctor's Porsche or Mercedes car, because you have a lifestyle problem. You can't figure out your diet, your exercise, taking care of your body. That's why. And it's unfortunate our healthcare system actually pays. If, if, if I talk about diet and exercise to a patient, that's zero dollars. I often tell my patients the best advice you already got for free. Yeah. <laughs> because I say, you don't uh, need to be you don't need to be in this situation in the first place. Mm. So let's try and spread the message and reverse and make people understand that their own body is, is the best gift they could have received. When they were born, they got it. I mean, I tell patients, you, you're not a millionaire, you're not a billionaire, you're a trillionaire. You're a born trillionaire because your body is made up of a trillion cells. And if you can just learn to take care of those cells, you will be the richest person in this world. Absolutely. You don't have to chase anything else. Yes. And what I like about your approach, Dr. Goswami, is you will often not even take uh, patients unless they've covered the basics. Uh, you know, so everything is in place from nutrition, exercise, general well being. Um, so you want to make sure they're in a, on a good baseline. Uh, and there's, of course, these cutting edge, uh, you know, treatments and technologies such as you, for example, offer. There's many other things we can do as well. And I'd love to hear, I'm sure some people in the audience also would love uh, to hear it, some of the other preventative and life um, span enhancing things we can do. I know something that's very near and dear to all three of us is uh, nutrition. Um, and, uh, you know, not just eating healthy and so forth, but very specific aspects of nutrition or also supplementation. I'll just start with myself. So, for example, part of my regular protocol is, uh, you know, I take resveratrol, I take uh, fisetine, I take quercetine. These are senolytics that basically help clear out, you know, all the damaged cells, all the senescent cells that we don't want in our bodies. And um, NMN, uh, there's things like that. that you can uh, implement into your daily routine. I personally do it. I get my, you know, blood work done two times, sometimes three times a year. So I know exactly what's going on and how certain things affect my own biomarkers. Uh, but I'd like to get the input of both of you on that. I'll jump in there because um, I love that you're a, a female that's about longevity and you still do your blood work, where in the health and fitness world, that's like a guy thing. It's mm -hmm. an interesting thing. And I'm like, no, no, everybody get your blood checked, see what's really going on inside of you. It, it's, I'm so glad you said that because that's something I wouldn't have thought about saying that today, but this is for everybody out there, just to make sure that those the body is functioning correctly. And I always say this, and I think you guys agree that 
food isn't like medicine. Food is medicine. And yes. if you can use it correctly for you, like you were saying, it, it's everybody's different. So how do you need to eat for you is such a big benefit for a person and how to get them correct and keep them for longevity. And I think like the doctor was talking about, he doesn't just take everybody. And I don't work with everybody that can't see that basic stuff. And we talked about this. We said, basic, if you're not going to sleep and you're going to be this guy that goes, oh, I, I'm a beast. I, I work 21 hours. I only sleep three. Okay, that's great. I don't want to work with you because you're already just cutting your sleep and your recovery down. And these are basic things that help us. Well, I don't eat. I'll eat once every two days or whatever it is. And I'm like, again, I don't want to, I don't want to work with you because nutrition and sleep and recovery, like the doctor said, these are some things that are just basic and doctor doesn't make no money off of that. I don't make really money off of that sleep, eat and train consistent. And you're set up to win already. And then use things like this to enhance you even more or prevent things that come into play. But I, I love the aspect of blood work. Make sure the body's functioning correctly. Supplementation. Uh, nutrition is key. Doctor, what do you, what do you think? Yes, about? absolutely. I mean, if, if medical science has made progress, real good progress, beneficial to us in some area, it is actually the testing. Mm -hmm. We can test now for a lot of conditions, a lot of sophisticated tests have arrived. And, you know, my brother's a cardiologist in Michigan, and he always says that you should at least, if not three times, at least twice a year, get your blood tested. Because mm -hmm. if you know something is wrong, then you can take the steps to correct it. You don't have to necessarily, you know, the mainstream medicine has failed on the treatment fronts, I feel, especially in the area where I practice of orthopedics and sports medicine, because a lot of this and still surgery is always going to have a role to play. You know, I, I started my career as a surgeon, so this is not to really knock on. But when we have published data, I mean, we have published data now showing that patients with knee pain who got steroid injections or underwent arthroscopic surgery required knee replacement a decade earlier than patients who choose to do nothing. Mm -hmm. So, so patients who choose to live with their knee pain, do physical therapy or some or the other took care of it. Actually, their joint lasted longer than the patients who went to the doctors, followed the advice, got steroid injections, got surgery done because each one of these is further damaging. You know, and, and like I said, obviously with the caveat that there are certain conditions for which surgery is needed. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, if I have a complete ACL tear, I don't think we are at a stage where we can deal with a complete ACL tear with stem cells. I, I am hopeful because I've treated partial ACL tears. I'm hopeful one day we will get there. But yes, that's an unstable joint. You need to go and get it fixed, you know, surgically. So, so just to, it's very, very important, but coming back to, which I'm really glad you guys brought up is testing is, is extremely important. You know, mm. Why is testing bad? Right. Why do people think testing is bad? Did I you guys see that or? Sometimes, you know, I get, I mean, I realize that I'm living a very mm, unusual life in a sense that both privately and also uh, my calling, my work is very focused on health and wellness and longevity. So that's, I, I just love it. That's what I do. Right. Re eat, live, breathe. So for me, it's perfectly normal as it is for both of you that testing is a part of that. Tests are able to give me quantifiable data about what works and whatnot. I think a lot of people still associate tests with there's something wrong, I need to find out. I associate tests with, I know what's going on. It gives me agency over my own health. A certain type of knowledge is also gives you a certain type of control. So I find that is, it's a vital tool in our kit. And as technology advances, I mean, we're having wearables getting deployed to in real time, being able to give us answers on our health state, uh, which can also in real time, these 
can be sent to your physician. So you can stay on top of stuff. All this is in development right now, super exciting stuff. Um, I'd like to bring in a question. We have a really good question from uh, one um, gentleman in our audience, uh, Chad Robinson. Chad, thank you for asking this question. And his question is, what kind of costs would one expect with treatments? And is there a treatment progression recommended once one gets their body physically optimized prior to treatment? Discussion into process of treatment would be interesting to me. All right. The cost of the treatments that I offer um, generally range from about $1,500 to about six, 7,000, depending upon your condition, what kind of cells have to be used. But that's just a ballpark idea of what it is. The treatment protocol is designed based on what are we treating and what your goals are. I mean, if somebody comes to me and they want to get back uh, doing what they love doing and continue to perform, they're going to require a different kind of uh, treatment regimen than patients who are just looking to get some relief from their pain or just you know continue and don't mind cutting down on few activities. So we are very conscious because obviously these treatments are still not covered by insurance. They're no, nowhere close to being approved by the FDA. Uh, and that is part of the reason. I don't want to knock anyone when I say that I choose my patients when it's not so much, but when, when you know, I'm treating a patient, there's a lot of trust involved. And I want to make sure that I'm able to help you out with the problem you have. And even when we give diet and other advice, I feel people should take it in the right way because we are giving them the right advice. You know, that's why you go to the doctor is, is to get the right advice. And mm -hmm. if, if treatment is not currently the best option for you, don't feel disappointed. We will make sure that you're given the right guidance to what to do to overcome the problem you have. So, you know, when the reason to be for somebody to go to the doctor is to get the best advice, not the advice that the doctor feels yeah. the patient should be getting. Yeah. yeah. So, so I approach it from that point of view. So, you know, but clearly, you know, certain things for cell therapy, because the product I'm using is your own cells, same day, same sitting. I'm not shipping these cells anywhere. These cells are not being kept in a freezer or anything. It is. Um, and then I think part of the question was also, yes, you may need this from time to time even after you get the initial success, uh, you know, um, you should have the option of needing them if and when, you know, you again feel uh, that, that help is needed. Mm -hmm. Because we certainly want to focus on preserving your joints and muscles uh, and not losing them, you know. Yes, yes. And uh, there's uh, actually, so let us know if we answered uh, your question fully, uh, Chad. Otherwise, we're happy to jump back in and talk. You just mentioned uh, injuries and Dr. Goswami uh, Santiago is actually asking. His first question is how PRP can help on biceps tendonitis. Can tendonitis be seen uh, tissue damage with the ultrasound you usually use when evaluating patients? Yes, yes. Ultrasound is a very good tool and, and most of the procedures I do um, our, not only the condition is evaluated with ultrasound, we can eliminate the need for MRI in a lot of cases. I do some x-rays also in my office. Um, and ultrasound is good for tendonitis, uh, for biceps tendonitis, partial tears of the biceps. We've treated them with cell therapy. And it's, it's a thing that one should definitely look into it. You know, it's, um, um, the most hardening feeling I get when I do follow-up ultrasounds on these patients is because I've had a surgical career also before I started doing, you know, a lot of this, um, basically, I got interested in it when, I, you know, professional athletes were seeking out, you know, treatments outside of mainstream because for them, performance is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when I do follow-up ultrasound after the treatments, and compare it to the other side, the tissues look exactly the same. The 
which is which is really good because after surgery I would always see scar tissue. Mm -hmm. I will always see the structure alter. But mm -hmm. here, because we are growing like-minded cells are growing the tissue that was damaged. Uh, after a few months, the appearance is also restored. And I think a lot of the benefits that patients see, um, not only in terms of relief of their symptoms, but also in terms of performance, much, much superior to what they would see from surgery or a steroid injections, mm. because there's no buildup of scar tissue. In fact, Cell therapy is really good for scar tissue breakdown too. So I have, we treated patients who've had surgery and have come to us because they're still, they haven't, you know, even a year after their knee surgery or uh, any other surgery, they had rotator cuff tear surgery. They haven't really um, be become symptom free. They cannot really perform at the level they were expecting to perform. And, and cell therapy is used to break down that scar tissue and have these cells regenerate the tissue. Outstanding. Have you actually, I want to interject a question, Dr. Goswami, have you heard about the enzyme serapeptase in conjunction with breaking down star, scar tissue? Uh, I find that uh, very interesting also as part actually of a maintenance routine for myself. You know, it's a systemic enzyme that basically you take it on an empty stomach and then it goes anywhere in your body where you require healing um, and dissolve scar tissue, any kinds of, you know, uh, cell clumps, biofilm, things that are just not beneficial for your body. That just on a side note, but there's another question that came in that relates to what you were just talking about. Uh, Robert, mom, could um, PRP help with something like a minor labral tear? I've been told only surgery can help. Seems extreme to have surgery for a minor tear. Right, so you have to understand PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. You know, so our blood has three kinds of cells, red cells that carry oxygen, white cells that fight infection, and then platelets, which have these wonderful 10, 12 different growth factors. So platelet-rich plasma means we took your blood, we removed the red cells and the white cells, we don't need them, and we left with platelets in the solution of the blood, which is the plasma. It is one treatment on the spectrum of cell therapy. Then we have cells we can derive from the bone marrow. And then we have cells we can derive from muscles, some fat, you know, not fat cells. We're again looking for stem cells in each one of these tissues, you know. So tell patients, to, if somebody's giving you a fat injection into your joint, they're, they're probably in my eyes, you know, uh, practicing medicine backwards. But fat is a good source of stem cells and nobody complains how much I removed. So, you know, we can get lots of stem cells. Bone marrow is another excellent. So these are all the spectrum. So yes, there are some labral tears for which surgery is the only answer, but there are some labral tears. If, if we find that they are not mechanically interfering with your joint, if we find that they're in the early stages, then we can treat them with cell therapy. PRP by itself may not be the answer there. You might require some stem cells. Another thing, um, just to clarify the difference is PRP is more like a good fertilizer and stem cells are the seeds. So whenever we encounter a condition where we're looking for regeneration and repair, I usually end up using a combination of these cells in different quantities. And uh, if I'm just dealing with inflammation or like Mike came and just, you know, with very, very early stages, minimal I mean, he could have probably carried on another year or two years without doing anything, but obviously he wants to be ahead of, of the curve. Um, then sometimes PRP or purely inflammatory conditions like biceps tendinitis or tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, plantar fasciitis, PRP, because we're not trying to grow anything there. We're just trying to take care of the inflammation. So mm -hmm. think of PRP as a good fertilizer and stem cells as the seeds. Sometimes you only need one, sometimes you need a combination of both. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, you asked me earlier, um, I tested, I went back and trained legs. Um, and I trained legs, I guess it was, he, he held me off leg day, everybody. I actually didn't do legs for a couple of weeks. Painful, <laughs> that was more painful than anything. 
Um, but I went back and I did test out the legs and, and got into a workout. And man, my mind, let me just say this. And I, I see why athletes don't come back from injuries because the mind is such a powerful thing. I was questioning myself on the first leg day back. How does it feel this good? Because I always have a, a warm up. And as I get older and decade after decade, I have different styles of how I warm up or a, a how my body feels as I warm up. And so now that that whole process was out because I get under the bar and I do my first set and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go. And I'm like, wait a minute, hold on now. <laughs> you know, this is, this is not the norm. The norm is I get in there, do a few sets and then go up and a few sets and so on and so forth. And I'm sitting there just questioning myself. And it was amazing how my mind was playing with me. And so for everybody out there that goes through that and goes through that process of can something work that well, it messed me up after 40 years of lifting heavy. It messed me up in a great way because I was questioning, did I feel that good? And so the first leg day back was very mild for me. Um, but then the second leg day, I went back and, and went again. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to go off. I'm testing this. I'm going to check out how fast this Ferrari can go. And I, and I put in the work and I was like, wow, surprised because there's always little aches and pains. You know, I've been doing it for 40 years, but nothing, nothing through the whole leg day. And I was sitting there just going, this isn't, this is, am I dreaming? I'm living in Disneyland or something now that everything's coming true. It's like, I get, I get another 10 years of lifting like this. I'm golden. And you did say something, I think we all said something earlier, and then somebody else said something on the, one of the questions on the side. They said, well, how much is it? And I know that that was one of the things that everybody had been, been talking to me about. Well, how much is it? How much is it? And I, I, I go back to the story that the doctor told me that day, and I agree with this. He was seeing a gentleman running down the street, you know, shirt off, abs, chest, um, looked great. And he saw a guy getting out of a Ferrari, out of shape, nice car. And he's like, which would you want? The Ferrari and that guy or the guy jogging down the street? And I'm always the guy being active, living a life that he wants to do and just jogging down the street looking good compared to buying a new car. And so for me, it's always pick and choose. You know, is it, uh, does it cost money? 100% does. Um, but I'd rather put my money into that in my body than going out and buying a material thing or anything like that, um, or figuring out a way to make the money to get it done. So for anybody that's wondering that and everybody that's asked me that for the last couple of weeks, this is something you got to do. This is something you got to do. I'm telling you, I trained legs this last time and I pushed it to try to find, try to find some of the uncomfortableness that I had before and I couldn't do it. Mm, that that's amazing and uh actually uh another uh, person in the audience darren bobo he also says you know the benefits of this procedure seem life-changing my question is are there any potential adverse effects and also is this a procedure that has to be repeated over time right i think we addressed the second part of the question um, repeated over time will depend upon you know, what your goals are, how much damage you have to begin with, and, and what kind of activities you do. So yes, it's, you should not explore these treatments if you think that one injection will set you for the rest of your life. Mm. It can require, just like with anything else, some repetition. Um, the first part of the question was adverse effects. Two very uh, important things. First, Mike alluded to, the only time my patients hate me is because when I ground them after this procedure, <laughs> you, have to, you have to stay off of it and they get all kinds of texts sometimes in the middle of the night saying they're going crazy <laughs> because of rest is a very important part of recovering because unlike your regular cortisone or gel injections and other things, we're not trying to just suppress pain. We're actually trying to repair and regenerate. So if you don't give the area a rest, so if somebody wants to think of that as a side effect, that's an important side effect. Actually, I've started to realize previously, I would say there's no side effects, but now I say. And secondly, um, 
of PRP by itself in soft tissues, not inside the joint so much. Mike's injection was inside the joint, but when I do treat, um, you know, plantar fasciitis or or a tennis elbow and stuff like that, PRP can cause some pain, and it's just the nature. We obviously have ways to minimize that pain, but the pain can be a little bit intense in the first 24 hours after PRP. That's the downside, but other than that, there is no damage from this product because it's coming from your body and it's going fresh into your body. Yes. And again, that's something, you know, we spoke about before. It's basically our bodies being uh, our own pharmacies. And this is what I see a, a development so much. And, you know, the, the research, the, the, the advancements that are being made, it really medicine is taking huge leaps where it actually gets back to some of the roots like what we would see in in TCM traditional Chinese medicine the Ayurvedic traditions the European herbal traditions where it's actually about helping your body to help itself and I think that's that's wonderful how uh, in different ways ancient knowledge and the cutting edge technologies there's 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 a similar uh, something some res that's resonating similar that's going on um we have another question from KGS. Uh, so glad you're talking about blood work. I have had CBP, including testosterone levels, checked the last three years. I just turned 55 last month. I've had lower back, hip, and forearm tendonitis for many years. I was a meat cutter over 17 years ago and still suffering off and on. Is there a time frame when treatment is more likely to help in relation to condition or age? Not necessarily. My oldest patient that I have treated is a 94-year-old dancer. He used to dance all his life in his hip um, gave, but he refused to undergo hip replacement, wanted to stay active. Um, so that is, um, you know, your own cells. Obviously, we're not turning the clock back that much, um, but um, at least with the current cell therapy. Um, but age is not uh, a restriction. Um, the amount of damages, and, and that is also depends upon what, what you're looking for. Like we answered the previous question, you know, one treatment, what can work for an 18 year old basketball player kid is not going to work for a 60 year old guy who's been, you know, honing his knees for years. So the treatment protocol, uh, we can explain. Um, you know, depending upon the individual condition, how many treatments we foresee you may need and what is it's going to be going forward. Mm. And with regards to treatments, uh, Jeff uh, asked a question, how many stem cell treatments are out there? Um, as many words in the dictionary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everybody... Uh, everybody can put up a sign for stem cell therapy. It's a, like I mentioned, it's a popular word and it attracts people's attention. But um, I get patients who had so-called cell therapy. And my first question is, if we're not at a point where these treatments are standardized or even the methods to doing the treatment is standardized, you know? I mean, what I do is a recipe. Uh, so, when patients have, I tell people, you could be sitting at a bar, you turn to your right, and you would have somebody raving about how stem cell therapy helps. And you turn towards your left, and the guy says, it's all bogus, it doesn't work. Because there's so many different variations to the treatment, what cells are being used, what type of cells are being used, what is the source of the cells? You know, now there are companies who are trying to market the cells uh, from newborn babies, you know, where, where people have donated their umbilical cord cells and others, and now these companies are using those cells, but those are foreign cells. And we, we're still at very early stages and we don't necessarily know if those are going to be effective. So, so it's, um, you know, the, the different treatments, the different cells, the different protocols, you know, the idea is, Cell therapy is another tool in our box. Mm -hmm. you know, if we start looking at it as a, the end all be all of everything, then we will again be cheating our patients. You know, it's another tool in our box. You still have to have a good physical exam, good diagnosis, figure out where things are, and then apply that tool if we think that tool can help. 
If not, there might be other tools that might still work for you. So, so it's it again comes down to good diagnosis, good you know treatment, and then how the treatment is performed. The devil is in the details. You know, coming to me for a second opinion because cell therapy don't work for you, the title doesn't do anything for me. We need to know what the details are. You know, somebody is doing PRP with 10 cc of blood. It's not going to give enough platelets especially if you're trying to treat a 60-year-old runner, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe that might work in a 15-year-old kid or you know, with a mild sprain. So then you also have to match how much cells are we going to need to treat the condition we are treating. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more evolved than just you know, going through a drive-through and getting a stem cell shot and feeling you got the treatment. It doesn't work. Are those cells live which are going into your body? What if the cells have been lost in processing, especially these foreign cells collected from babies and set in a freezer for months? Yeah. Right? Are those cells even alive by the time you're getting them? Mm. Mm. How many cells are there? So there's lots of, you know, and, and also we're not at a point where there's a dose. I, I can't tell you I'm going to put 70 million cells or 100 million cells. I mean, I don't know. I want to give you as many cells as I can from your own body. But, you know, we don't know. With tablets, we know it's five milligram twice a day or 10 milligram. You know, we're not there yet. So these treatments have to be taken very, very seriously. And you should always, um, you know, ask questions wherever you are. If you're seeking these treatments, ask the right questions. Make sure you have the answers, you know. Uh, if you need a reference, you know, a lot of this is written in the book uh, we wrote, The Stem Cell Cure. It was, again, a patient-driven effort. You know, one of my patients happened to be an author, had the treatment, and felt good and wanted to spread the knowledge. So it was heartwarming that a patient-driven effort of putting the Stem Cell Cure book out there, um, you know, but it, it lists like, what are the simple questions you should be asking anybody who's doing stem cell therapy, then you'll get the load on if mm. you're going to get the right treatment or not. So, Very yeah. sage advice, inform yourself. And Mike, I have a couple of questions for you. I know somebody's oh. jumping at their teeth. Uh, Jeff's asking, first of all, can Mike use his legs 100% again? And uh, he also asked about your back pain, if that's the reason why you want uh, stem cell treatment. Again. Um, yes. And, and yes, I can definitely use my legs at hundred percent. Now um, I had to get over the little hiccup of my mental, what was going on me mentally thinking that should I baby this and it feels too good. I guess it's the guy who gets new hips or something and he's walking with a cane. When did, when does he throw the cane away? Well, the better I think for my approach is that I jumped back into it, especially because I didn't come from a, a full-blown injury, um, which is interesting because we talked about it earlier and I, I know we went past it pretty quickly, but when I put up my videos talking about PRP, everybody goes, you got injured, what happened? Yeah. And I love that because none of us think that way, but society thinks that way. Oh, you did it, you got injured, what happened? No, no, <laughs> I wanna enhance what I have. Um, so to answer the first question, yeah, I can go 100%. Stem cell for the back. I think the question for me is more than, do I want to do that because I have lower back issues or anything like that? Um, I think the main thing for me is, what is the protocol? Is there a protocol? Because I know I did PRP, and, I, and I, I see over here on the questions here, we have some incredible champions in the house right now. We have uh, Mr. Uh, Olympia, classic bodybuilders over here, and some of these other football players that I knew. Um, uh, growing up. So what would be the protocol? I went in and did PRP for my knees. Would that be a good baby step into being preventative? Um, or is it the stem cell and just go for that? Or I, I'm, I don't know what the well, protocol I mean, would be, or is there a protocol? Part of, so there are a few layers to that question. Even with the knees, remember we did the ultrasound, you know, the imaging, the x-rays showed us some changes, which we were expecting. Right. So it's not like just because you don't have too many symptoms that everything is, is 
good and fine. I mean, there is some wear and tear going on. You know, yes. I mean, there's a reason why they tell you how much your brake pads are on your car when you go for servicing, right? So, you know, it's coming, right? Yeah. You may not need it that same day, but at some point you'll have to change those. So similarly with the body and, and just like with the knee, we started with the evaluation. For me, that is still very, very important, you know, because I think half the treatments don't work because they were being done for the wrong reasons. You know, I often get patients with back pain. I was just talking to a lady yesterday and she said she's been going through a lot of injections. She's had epidurals and, you know, steroid injections, no relief. She saw a spine surgeon who told, you know, maybe she's not a good candidate for surgery. So I just paused for a moment and I asked her, but what was your diagnosis? And she was like, um, actually, nobody has told me what my diagnosis is, <laughs> right? So what are we dealing with here? Are we dealing with disc disease, facet joints? You know, the back has a lot of components to it. Oh. So the important thing again for us will be, we'll do an exam, we'll do some imaging, and we'll figure out what it is. And then, like I said, in the spectrum of cell therapy, we have lots. We started with PRP, we have bone marrow cells, we've got fat cells, we've got other sources. And then we'll come up with a protocol of what we think what the damage is and how well it needs to be treated so you can see reasonable benefit after the procedure. I think I'm digesting this differently than most. I'm digesting this going, there's an option for me to get tune-ups every few years or something. That's how I approach it compared to, I know some of the questions was, do I have to do it again? And I'm over here going, I get to do it again. I want to make sure I do it again, just in case. And I know that it, it, he'll come to the point or the doctor will come to the point and go, you don't need it right now. Just chill out. Go, do, yes, go yes. wreck yourself a little bit. <laughs> and that's interesting because a lot of times, even when we think patients are going to need, we're not going to necessarily recommend I mean, I've had patients that I thought would be back within three, four months looking for more treatment of the same area. And they don't call me for a year, year and a half. That's awesome. Then I have patients that I thought will do excellent and superb, but in six months they need more help. So there's still a lot we don't understand about cell therapy. And, mm. and also because the source is your own body, you know, the cells are coming. I'm, I'm sure there is a difference. I mean, in the composition of the cells, how it is. It's just, I mean, even with medicines, we've known that, you know, somebody can take Tylenol and their headache goes away and somebody doesn't respond to it. So I, I always, just, you know, try to caution patients. But yes, the, the, the main part why we are discussing this is that in medicine, we've not had something mm -hmm. that is, is, is so beneficial without any downsides. Mm. And now with you, Mike, I also see this uh, as a possibility as a, for a tune-up, because I think there's uh, two different approaches, of course, to all these new um, you know, treatment modalities that we have at our disposal now. And one is, of course, healing, seeking healing for a condition that is really inhibiting you from living your life to the fullest. And the other also is maintaining, keeping up, or even optimizing what you have. So I think these are two very different um, segments, uh, you know, different uh, groups of people, but that also kind of interconnect. Uh, I myself, I'm very fortunate. I count myself to the one that just wants to maintain and enhance um, and I also see that as a gift, you know, I get to do this. We get to do this, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Manage the decline, <laughs> manage the decline. If we can slow it down, I'm, I'm a hundred percent there. I'm listening to this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting involved. I'm trying. If we can manage that, just slow it down a bit. And I know that you guys both said something earlier and we talked about this. And I think we all three do something. We tune out the the average. We tune out, uh, oh, 76 is, that's about it. That's your average. You got to stop playing sports when you're by 35, that you're done. And I think we three tune that out because obviously I, I'm a mid-50 guy that just 
trained with a 300 pound monster at the gym and beat them on everything. So we kind of live outside that. And I wish more people would ignore the, the mass. And, and, and I remember, yeah, I, I had a patient, um, you know, he came and they were heli, uh, he was a heli skier. And um, so they would literally go 20 days, you know, skiing downhill once they're dropped by the helicopter up on the mountains, you know, and, and when he came, he was, he was touching 70 and I was very impressed. He had taken good care of himself, but he said, you know, I need help for my knees and uh, don't tell me about knee replacement because I was already told that 10 years ago and I'm not going to do it. And so I was, obviously this case came to me many years ago in the early part of when I was doing regenerative cell therapy. So I had no real outcomes to really give him any kind of assurances, but he said, no, I mean, this makes sense. This is not going to cause me harm. If it works, it works great. Yeah. So he had the treatment and then about a year later, his wife stopped by. And so I, just to start the conversation, I told her, you know, how, why do you let him do this crazy stuff? <laughs> and she said, no, I go with him. <laughs> And Love. that's why I'm here now to, you know, to take care of my own means. Mm -hmm. So it it's, was interesting, you know, I mean, it in a way is encouraging to me also as a physician when I see you guys pushing the boundaries. I mean, it, it, it as much as I think I'm doing for you, each one of my patient's story inspires me to, to continue to do, you know, better in, in what I do and even take care of my own health also. I mean, a lot of this even as physicians, we don't realize and we neglect. And for me also, you know, it, it just, you know, hobnobbing and, you know, combining knowledge, what you guys are sharing on, on your individual channels and podcast is, is, is very illuminating, to say the least. You, you guys are around people that think like that. I mean, like a guy in his 70s getting dropped off on a helicopter to go skiing. And he's like, hey, Hey, patch me up. Let me go again. And that's the kind of attitude. That's living life. That's not yep. surviving. That's living. Thriving. That's, Thriving. That's we do. Yeah. And one of the things is I was leaving your office, doctor, and I, and I made conversation with a gentleman that was there to see you. And he, say, he said he was 78 at the time. And he said he saw you seven years earlier. And he's a loves golf. And he was uh, unable to do golf as well in the early 70s, his age. And he came and saw you. And now he's 78 going to get a, a, a fix up, a tune up. And at that age, still doing what he loves. He goes, I love golf. I'm out there. Get a little tune up, get back out there and keep doing it. And I'm like, that's living. Yeah. And it's mindset, right? Mindset is so important. And it's really the key uh, to everything. What, uh, you know, you mentioned before also that it's about tuning out all that chatter, all that you can't or you won't. It's actually really finding your own inner compass, having a goal and going for it. And um, also in your case, Mike, I mean, what uh, many people who are not very knowledgeable about, let's say, bodybuilding, it's not just body, it's mind mindset. It's, it's having a goal, it's um, perseverance, dedication, and discipline. And that's applicable to all of our lives. You know, mindset is the key. It's the foundation for any of the goals we want to achieve. And I think, you know, all of our individual personal uh, quests, and also what we put forth into the world um, is really, you know, living, thriving, not just surviving. And to a it's a, for me, it's a holistic approach. You know, it's, it's the brain, it's the mind, it's the body, it's the spirit, if you don't want to call it soul. And um, uh, we had a question before that I'd love to hear also your, both of your answer to us. Uh, Steve asked, uh, he says, hi, everyone. Thank you for this live webinar. Grateful for people like yourselves. Thank you so much. We're grateful for you being here, Steve. My question is, how does meditation fit into this equation? And of course, meditation is tied to mindset also. I'll jump. Uh, um, meditation for me is 100%. Um, I guess we, there's different forms of meditation. For me, it's, it's listening to that inner voice. Um, 
the the boy that's living the dream kind of voice in my head every day that I wake up and get to uh, uh, enjoy the life I've created and and continue to do that, what I do. And so that meditation comes with my lifting and it comes through that. And we don't play music at the gym I go to until I'm done training because I don't want the noise of the music. I want the noise of my mind and what's going on in myself and what am I saying to myself day in and day out. So my meditation may be a little different, but it's just me listening to the ups and downs of what my voice is saying inside of me. Let's do this. Let's stay consistent. Let's let's be healthy. Let's stay positive on this and continue to live the dream that we're living and keep, keep setting that boundary because I think we're all setting into this and I, I sure have in the health and fitness world, if I'm going to a, a small percentage of elites that are still doing this from the 80s. And so now it's kind of like a different kind of meditation for me that it's, it's for me and all those lone wolf, those kids that don't think they are going to achieve something. And they can achieve something great no matter where they are, what they're doing. So it, it goes much further than weightlifting or meditation it goes to I'm, I'm creating something here it's something bigger than myself and and i love that approach mm -hmm. um you know it's meditation is is excellent and traditionally we've thought of meditation as sitting in a room and trying to dim the lights and quiet i mean but basically as mike was pointing out it is quietening your mind you know it's calming the mind down and there are several activities that can help you do it i mean much to the charging of some of my patients i love riding motorbikes i grew up on motorbikes and i ride all kind of dirt bikes track bikes you know motorcycles and it's generally considered very dangerous and i often get asked you know but i also find that when i'm on my motorbike i'm it is sort of a meditative experience for me because first of all on a motorcycle you don't have room to think about anything else so you're focused on what you're doing which is what if you break down the definition of meditation it is that of single-minded right so you take the noise out and 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 you just calm your mind down so certainly um, a very good question and a very very important call. whichever way you choose to do it uh, it's very, very important to calm the mind down. It's unfortunately the mind where, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly exists. <laughs> and, and, uh, if we can calm it down, just learn to use your intellectual mind, but not the mind that's constantly telling you things that are not going to be helpful. You know, all of our fears and all of our, unfortunately, other things come from what the mind is telling. It's obviously trying to protect us, but we have to let go of that mind. Yes, absolutely. Dr. Gulami, I love what you just said, that you can find this meditative state actually when you do something like riding a motorbike, because obviously you have to be in the present, right? You can't be, you know, in the past or having anxiety about the future. You got to be in the present to survive. And um, I can relate to that from the little bit of martial arts experience that I have, which is this much compared to yours, Mike. But I, I used to like uh, to, you know, do Krav Maga and you have to be right there because otherwise you're going to get punched in the face. Right, right. And I love that. I mean, there's other methods, of course, you know, the breathing meditations or yogic meditations. That's all wonderful. I think what 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 where they all kind of touch upon each other is and you know to quiet the mind dr goswami we have something called the default mode network which is when it's in a good place it can be really helpful to us connect with the world or place in the world can help us survive when we're stressed and not in a good place that's the voice that tells you everything that's wrong with you or wrong with others and that can get you ruminating and anxiety or depression anxiety for myself is something I've been you know working on for pretty much all of my adult life and um, I'm now very happy at a super low baseline level which for me is a huge success um, but I think when we find methods to actually uh, calm our default mode network down and where we get out of this uh, negative thinking loop this fear-based thinking, uh, that is really what can help us um, uh, to heal in all aspects. And I think it's also a prerequisite for healing physically. It's a combination of things too. I think a lot of time in our society, we're obviously all looking for the magic, the silver bullet, 
one thing that can do everything for it, but it's <laughs> not like that. It's, it's so many different components to our body. So I encourage people to do as many of the things they can learn from Mike, from you. It's very, very important. And at the end, I'm a physician. If you have a problem, I'm happy to help, but I'd rather you not have a problem that <laughs> needs a doctor. Uh, and, and so doing all of these things is very, very important try to put the whole maintenance. We cannot buy today any piece of machinery without getting a maintenance plan, yeah. right? Then the human body is the most complex machinery that was ever built. Mm -hmm. So what is your maintenance plan is what I usually start and end with. Do you have one? Think about that. Mm -hmm. I love that you both are, are active meditation people. I have met very few that, that when, when they speak of meditation, they always speak of, of sitting in the room and relaxing. And I always try to express myself that it, it's when the weight and the pressure of the weight is on me. And I, I, I have training partners, but I'm not one of these guys that's in the gym having them scream at me. I don't need no noise. Because when, and you've done martial arts, and so you understand there's, a, there's an incredible peace, quietness when you're in the fight. Where mm -hmm. people think you're hearing everything you don't you, it's a muffled sound and you're in it and, and it's just your voice it's a beautiful moment and so i love that you guys both do that i, mean, I have a question michael, michael have, jordan has described something similar where he is able to tune out the twenty thousand people in the arena all he would see was the ball and the basket i mean and that's that's the kind of you know being in the moment or we call in the zone in the moment just gave me tingles right that, i mean because because that's wow yeah. that's tingles just thinking of that that, that kind of crowd for them right. to be in that position and they tune it out like we have done in that sense just right in the motorcycle or under the weight but they got twenty thousand people yelling at you and it's just quiet within his side that's amazing go um, ahead you had a question you were referring to um, well, I get, uh, I'm just got this team has given me tons of things. Um, we're running out of time. And so I, I, I see a lot of people, um, I guess at this stage, it's up to you guys. Uh, if there's any last questions or how can we move forward on, on getting people in touch with you, doctor, and, and for both of you guys and what you guys do. Just, um, I mean, I'm through the website, the Goswami Clinic .com. Just Google my name and you should see the Goswami Clinic .com. And you can call and talk to our patient care coordinator. You know, she, they should be able to answer most of your questions. And then if you need to set up a consultation, we're happy to do that. You know, so just, just reach out to the office via phone or you can even fill out an online contact form on the website. And what I'll do too is uh, I have the Titan crew and I see a lot of the Titan crew members are here today. And this is, um, thank you guys. Thank you for that support and stuff. And I'll put up something inside the Titan crew and also on uh, the Mike O'Hearn official page on where to get a hold of them. But also then I am available to talk about um, the process that I went through and how I feel and that I'm, I'm gonna uh, continue to do things um, and see what is possible for the rest of my body as we continue through this. And I'll keep putting out these videos for you guys. Absolutely. And same goes for me. Anybody have any questions with regards to longevity or optimizing physically, mentally, spiritually, I'm always glad to answer questions. And uh, you can just most easily find me uh, via my podcast, Superhumanize. Just uh, go onto the website and reach out or in social media, all three of us, I think that's really part of our mission is to help others elevate and uh, just live their lives fully. And that's just really something I can tell also you two, uh, Mike and Dr. Goswami, it's just something that for, it makes us happy to see mm -hmm. others thrive. Yes. I, I have one last question because um, I'm looking and it's, I see skincare. I see skincare is, is a big thing here. It is for me, I know that. You have beautiful skin, glowing. I heard, maybe doctor can answer this for me. I heard um, PRP for skin and hair. Is this something or, or am I misled? 
I want to know that too. <laughs> there are certainly applications, but you know, we have Ariana here, who's obviously skin is very admirable. We should just right. listen to what she does <laughs> to get those results. <laughs> Well, you're very kind. I actually do a lot of things from the inside to the outside. And I know we're running out of time, but uh, happy to recap a little bit. So from the internal TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, I'm a big fan of medicinal mushrooms, anything from reishi, also called the mushroom of immortality, to astragalus, to uh, you know berries like schizandra. There's a mushroom called tremella that's incredible for skin. Uh, I'm a huge fan of certain uh, modern devices, such as I have an infrared sauna at home, as well as a red light. And both of this is just incredible for uh, your all over health and wellness. However, let's talk sp skin specifics. It's really incredible for collagen building, elastine, and um, also it boosts your mitochondria, you know? Oh, yes. Is that a <laughs> <laughs> Great. You're not leaving me behind. I'm right on this. I already read about some of the stuff you're yeah, doing. That's right. I ordered that right away. Yeah. And uh, excellent. And I mean, there's stuff like, uh, you know, you can do like, um, I mean, microneedling at home. There's a lot of things we can do nowadays from the inside to the outside where we don't need to, uh, you know, be barbaric to ourselves. I, I mean, everybody can choose whatever they would like to do. I think the preventative things we can do, uh, they'll keep us, you know, looking a way that we are pleased with for a long time are much better than the radical things that involve also injuring your body and taking right. your face off and putting it on again. So uh, there's amazing things we can do, uh, such as the few that I've mentioned now. And again, if anybody has any further questions, super happy to answer them in depth, just reach out. I think the take home mantra is do a whole bunch of things and then some more. <laughs> as long as they're and not causing side effects, they're not causing you any harm yes. because every day our body is getting some beating and if yes. we can maintain it, that's that's the way to go. Yes, but is is it also good for hair and skin, Dr. Goswami? Because that it is, it is, yes, there have been. So. Mm. I love that. You guys are both beautiful, beautiful people, souls. I love it. Thank, thank you, Mike. Thanks. And I'm going to be, be reaching out for uh, more skincare ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be reaching out for some bodybuilding tips because I'm getting into that. So <laughs> such a pleasure to be with both Same of you gentlemen. Uh, such a privilege to be with everybody who has, you know, been giving us part of their day, listening to us, asking excellent questions. So this was really a joy for me. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna go relax now a little bit. <laughs> My rays on. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna post this video if that's okay with everybody over on my page and, and let the world see this continuously because I think this is just such important information. Absolutely. Wonderful. Great reconnecting with you. Have a fantastic rest of your day, everyone. Take care, everybody. <laughs>